Hello, my sweet, dear, magical friends. Welcome, Bill Common, to your psychic tarot reading with me, Natalie, spelled in A T A L E E. This is where we open up the energies of your download using the tarot cards. I channel, I do a free meditation beforehand, tell you guys what it is, and then we open it up with the tarot. However, first and foremost, I am going to take you over to my sparkly brand new website thewholesomeoccultist.com where you can actually take a look at the halloween edition six month kit friday the 14th is the last day to guarantee order and get it by halloween um so you know this just honestly like has absolutely everything here's the thing what makes it like super duper special is a pamphlet the combination of everything and the tea itself this has all been like handcrafted by herbalist a pop the cafe like very very special so i'm just really excited about this look at this cute little eye with the little um the tea strainer has this eye thing to um steep your tea like that's gorgeous and beautiful so yeah i'm super excited about this it's a special edition halloween kit so it has the oogie boogie it has um, things that are very very specific for protection for psychic protection so um you guys thank you so much for reaching out about my headaches guys i've been getting headaches my entire life like in high school i even had specific prescriptions for 800 or a thousand milligrams of ibuprofen it was like all day every day headache so that's just part of i i have the things that i do you know like the thing so thank you though i i really appreciate you know the love the love i love you guys so thank you so much i'm feeling much better and um yeah so you guys have also been reaching out about the psychic attacks if you feel like there's something up more than likely you are correct when i have zooms with you guys i have all kinds of questions that i ask you at the very beginning in order to figure out and diagnose what's going on there's a lot out there so when i say psychic attacks this is everything from people sort of just like innocently sending you bad vibes and little curses that they don't even know are like really curses and that kind of thing all the way to all kinds of cultures there's there's all kinds of things that people do that they got from their ancestors that's you know um absolutely not karmically sanctioned so that's why i do not do i don't associate what i do with any established i don't believe in formalized religion so i don't believe in formalized witchcraft i'm empirical i do what works you know and i test things out and i test things over and over and over again and i take in the results from all of my acolytes and everything so you know even when um people kind of get into little things or little um not things i'm trying to be more specific get into like um like little fights little arguments disagreements and they're like doing things back and forth you could get caught up into it especially if you're living in a home with two other individuals that are fighting there's like a whole thing and so like i said when i have a session with you guys it is really diagnostic i'm very surgical with the um, diagnostics that I use when we talk about that kind of a thing. Eclipse windows and manifesting. I do not recommend manifesting under eclipse energy. I also do not condone or advocate for things like anything that has to do with impacting negatively or otherwise projecting into someone else's free will. I'm not the witch to call to call someone in or to like hex someone. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All you are sanctioned to do is to protect yourself and defend your Yourself. never having anything to do with messing with another person's free will okay so if you got into something if you did send a curse out if you did send someone some negative energy and you're suffering from that if you're suffering karma it maybe it's not a psychic attack maybe it's you're getting some karma back and you need help to fix it you need help to alchemize it and you know you're like okay I, I learned the lesson and it's still here you know it's this is under the same kind of a, um, umbrella here so the psychic protection box i would rather have you guys order it and have it and then you can go right to it and use it rather than order it like when you need it and then it takes like at least a couple days to get to you so you know that's that's just um that's just my 
professional advice. Halloween, we're having a special live stream on the YouTube where I'm gonna basically just take everything out of the box and just like ooh and awe over it. So, you know, maybe we'll share some stories as well, some, you know, Halloween fun. Um, so that's fast approaching. So make sure to get your orders in by Friday the 14th if you want it by Halloween. And we are gonna sell those until they sell out. And then you will not be able to find this exact special edition Halloween box. There will be other things to purchase that will help for psychic protection, but it will not be this in this iteration at this time and the way it is right now. So, okay, let's dive into your download. So tuning into your energy, it was very, very interesting because I was picking up. So you know that line where it says, I don't know who said this, but something about seeking inspiration until the moment of creativity strikes, something like that. I'm getting something like that, but reversed. So it's almost like you have the spark of creativity and you want to like do something or you are taking action, but there's something, it's almost like the cart before the horse where you're very excited about something, but you want to wait. I don't know if it's like for the inspiration part, that's just kind of what came up, but you're waiting for something else. And it might be some kind of confirmation. It just feels like, um, to be in agreement with that, to wait for the confirmation, wait for the signal or wait for whatever. You might already know what you're waiting for before you take action or before you do something. But um, even if you don't, just wait it out and you'll get the message, okay? Because you're gonna be even happier when you get that. It's like you already know something, but you're waiting on something, wait, Wait for what you're waiting for is, is basically it. Okay, what message am I here to deliver about this download, please? Ooh, goodness gracious. Okay, got a bunch of cards here. We have the King of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles, the Page of Wands, and the Eight of Swords. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, so that Eight of Swords. Okay, that's interesting. So there is some kind of I don't know if it's like a problem in your outer environment, if there's some kind of, I mean, this could be like a staffing issue that you're understaffed. This could be that you're stuck and you can't break through some kind of stalemate or gridlock or the company can't move forward on a project or a department can't move forward on something because they're relying on another department and they can't move forward because they're waiting. And, you know, it could be something kind of like that, but this can absolutely also be in someone's mind that there's some kind of blockage. There's something that is preventing you from, um, I don't know if this is actually being creative. It's solving some kind of issue or solving some kind of problem. And there's the solution. It's this ace of pentacles. This is something that's going to be financially extremely lucrative. And it might even have something to do with children or young people, or just like a very fresh, bright, new energy. And I love this king of um, swords. Like whatever that eight of swords is, whatever the way that you may have been holding yourself back or something may be held back, it's about to, like the dam, it's about to, you're about to move very far beyond that. We're going to open that up too, so. Thank you. Queen of Cups and the two, yes, the two of wands is next. So this does have something to do with another person who is not, they don't live locally. They live either out of state or out of the country. It's interesting. So someone has some kind of like quagmire over here and they're about to burst through that. They're about to overcome either some kind of issue externally that is maybe dependent upon external factors beyond your control, or they're about to overcome some kind of mental blockage that will allow them to perceive an opportunity that is like on a platter, like right before you or them, whoever this is. And it has something to do with someone who could be very emotional, intuitive. This would be someone that's very emotionally mature. This is someone that you can trust. And you might get a sense of that. What's interesting is that this could also be some kind of foreigner or someone that is just physically very far away from you, but you're still able to connect with them or they're still able to connect with you or they're still able to project their energy very far and wide somehow. So that's cool. 
last but not least, you have another queen. You have a queen of wands and you have the hermit. So when I talk about these archetypes, when I talk about like kings and queens and pages, those could always be separate people. They could be aspects of yourself, your masculine energy, your feminine energy. So <clears throat> take these all as qualities and different snapshots, kind of like of moments in time. Okay. Bottom of the deck, we have the Knight of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, and the Queen of Swords. Um, especially when there's like a lot of people, like there might be a lot of people involved in your situation. So just keep all of that in mind. Overall, again, this is about a mental overcoming of something. A mental... Now, this could be ego. This could absolutely be ego. This can also be some kind of a lack mentality. What's interesting is that you've got the king and the queen of swords, and then you have two queens, the queen of cups and the queen of wands here. So there's something about having the right balance. What's interesting, and I was just talking about this in Tarot Talk today, we did the magician. It's like it's usually like a 45 minute to an hour class on one card. And, and today we did we did the um the magician. So it's and I talked about it then. It's sort of like having the balance between your mental strength, your mental masculine, divine masculine energy, and balancing that with your feminine or your heart-centered divine feminine um, emotional intuitive attracting energy because the mental masculine energy is very pointy it's like a laser and it projects out and the feminine divide feminine energy is a magnet it brings things in that energy is very diffused like a light bulb okay um what's interesting is that all of this, like this renaissance that neuroscience is having, I'm actually going to link the books in the description box below. All of those will be Amazon referral links. So check those out. Becoming Supernatural and The Brain That Changes Itself. God, I read that one a really long time ago. But those are like the two books. Like that's like the only two books that you need. Actually, really just The Brain That Changes Itself. But I think you guys are going to like Becoming Supernatural very, very much too. How they talk about it in Becoming Super, he, he does, Dr. Joe Dispenza, he talks about it as brain-heart coherence. And he's talking about the frequencies and the correlations. And we're having a lot of science that backs up those kinds of correlations between spirituality and science. So that's number one, very exciting. But number two, it's everything in the tarot that he's talking about, that he has the scientific backing of. And it's just it's really cool. So if you've been doing tarot for like 30 years, like you're, you're really like right there and becoming supernatural and the research has just now caught up to you. So if you've already been sort of thinking in that mode or in that mindset, you're just like way ahead of the game. And now you just know more of the science behind it. So one example he gives is that if you think one thought like over and over again, like, um, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. He talks about that mental energy stops and doesn't get to the heart. You need both. You need to be a balanced masculine and feminine energy within yourself to manifest. And so what I'm getting here, because it's so very clear about this mental blockage, there's something that you want or that you're trying for or that you want to work or something you want it to be a certain way. and there needs to be some kind of balance, an internal focus of your um, feminine and masculine energies. Now, brain-heart coherence, it's also talked about in the gateway tapes and in the gateway document. They don't call it brain-heart coherence. They call it um, some other kind of, I think they call it just resonance with Earth's electromagnetic field. So they call it something a little bit different. The spiritual community, I think they call it like being in alignment. So it's like all these different things, but it's like the same, the same thing, the same concept. So I'm getting a kick out of it. It's really cool. Um, but with this energy read, with this energy spread, and then the download that I got for you about how you're like waiting for something else, it really makes sense. So you have like half of your plan or half of your, you either have the plan or you either have the plan and you need the resources or you have the resources and you need confirmation of the plan. It's like you have the whole vision and you see the parts that are missing. And I'm just here to tell you that the parts that are missing are really inside of yourself. So 
don't wait for that environment to to do all of the work. You focus on like there is something with this eight of we're gonna actually let's open that up now. Take a look at this because what you're waiting for is not. It's almost like you're not waiting for an like maybe an actual confirmation. And maybe you are waiting for an actual confirmation. But what you're really waiting for is the feeling that that confirmation is going to give you. Does that make sense? So let's say you have the resources and you want to, and you're waiting to confirm the plan for something. I don't know, maybe you're switching jobs. Maybe you're moving across the country. Maybe you are starting a family, leaving the family, starting school, going back to, you know, whatever your thing is. You need to connect with that feeling of having that part already, that that's resolved, that you know, you feel good about it, that you feel good about whatever that thing is. Tell me about the Eight of Swords specifically. I'm just looking at the Eight of Swords. The Lovers. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. I don't like this description for the lovers. I think it's kind of like lame. Seduction. The red magic of the plants. Nature is an unerring guide. Plants and animals are examples to be imitated. Magic perfume seduces and sustains us in important sentimental choices. However, I do see what this is. So there's some kind of resistance towards a person. It could be someone that you are already very close to. It could be a new person that you're meeting. It could be a friend of a friend. I don't know. But your resistance is towards, um, it, or it's like resistant to a person or a type of person, or you may have the perfect person, but there's some subconscious programming that is casting worries, doubts, and fears into the situation. So... It looks like there's going to be some clarity around that. Like there's going to be something that does give you more confidence and it might be something financial. There might be some kind of, um, I don't know if it's like a resource or a valuable that they bring to the table or that it's an idea that they have, or if it's some kind of, it's going to be something that you can actually benefit from. Because someone feels like they just can't, this is kind of weird. It's like they feel like they can't, make this decision until something else happens or until something it's weird it's almost like there's it's, it's like this person strategically feels kind of stuck this is almost like you can't say something until i don't know until xyz happens hmm i feel like that's going to make more sense for like whoever this reading is for all right, let's take a look at the Queen of Cups and the Two of Wands. This is someone, someone far from you. Thank you. And it's the Eight of Wands. So you might be talking to them or they may be projecting very warm words, very comforting words from afar or maybe even through written word or something. Eight of Wands, whispering, the magic of the lizard, doubts and suspicions dissolve in the sunlight, clarity illuminates feelings and situations. So yeah, this person's probably very like humane or compassionate or empathetic. They don't have to be a mother, they can be, or they just kind of have like that vibe. And so, you know, that's helpful. That's always nice. Let's take a look at the Hermit and the Queen of Wands. So this is someone moving kind of in secret. Now they may take a break maybe away from, I don't know, some part of their life or some aspect or something where, but it's like they have to sort of, this is, they need like the alone time in order to come out and be very strong when they do come out either in public or I guess nowadays it could be social media, but this is someone that's a very confident person. They are confident, a risk taker. And not only do they take risks confidently, they're confident because they've already done the, how would I put this? They've already done the soul searching before taking the action or before taking the risk. This is someone very comfortable with 
taking leaps. And this could actually even be some kind of like small business owner or an entrepreneur or something, someone very comfortable with making a lot of executive decisions. They're very comfortable with being a leader. They're very comfortable with responsibility. Okay. Kind of like trading, you know, how you, you just, or crypto, like you, you, I would not recommend that to someone who is very scared. You know, like that's just not for everyone. Or to or to work as like a freelancer of, of, of industries, you know, it's like it, it's not very, not everyone can do that. That's not good and healthy for like absolutely ever. It is for this person though. This person keeps very like psychologically or spiritually very strong as they like do their thing. Okay, the fool, an erotic outburst, surrendering to love. The magic action frees us from uncertainty, urging us to surrender to love. Willingness and spontaneity and spontaneity and willingness. The I like this person. I think this is my favorite person in your reading. This is Queen of Wands. This is like Scarlett O'Hara. This is always my very spicy, um, not rambunctious, excited. You know, like just very, very confident, ready to go learn. I will figure it out. Just let me in. Let me in, coach. Let me in. You know, like just very willing to get in there and like learn fast, probably a very fast learner. Um, so looks like they're starting. They may surprise you. Like if this is a person in your life, they don't have to be a fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising. They can be, they don't have to be, but they may absolutely surprise you, especially. Well, I was balancing this, especially if they like disappear for a little bit and then they come back with a whole new I don't know like identity or business or passion or now this can even be like an artist or something that like they they go away for I don't know a couple months whatever and then they come out with you know like for me my first like really epic I love I love writing epics by the way like I can totally do I don't pick dramas, but the first one that I wrote, a really, really big one, I took six weeks, morning, noon, and night, all day, every day for six weeks for the first draft. The first draft was 174 pages. Got it down to 154, and now it's a lean, mean 120. However, and we're still revising, we're still doing rewrites. So, you know, it's, it's like, but I went away. Like I, that was like the first six weeks, it's like the first it was the last week of December and then like the first five weeks of, of the next year. So it was a good time to kind of like cloister myself away and just work on my script. That's kind of like this, like you just cloister away. Maybe you're making a painting or a mural, or maybe you've been commissioned for something and then you just come out. So now that's what I say. Like if I, if there's like, if there's like how long is it going to take to write a script? I'm just gonna, I, I always just say like six weeks. Cause that's what I did. That's, that's, that was, that was like my first point of reference is like, okay, I wrote 170 page strong first draft in six weeks. So that's what I can do. So, but that's for a feature. That's for a feature. Um, I'm sure I could do it a lot shorter for, for pilots because pilot, I can't, okay. I can't get, I, I'll, I'll keep it, but it's not about me. It's about you. It's about the message. Um, but that's what this is. This is like, you know, you go get your downloads and then you just like jump off into a whole new whole new thing, a whole new adventure. So honestly, this is some kind of opening. It depends on what you need more of. So it's like you might need more of this mental strength and to build up that strong brain coherence so that your brain sending out really good. Here's another really cool thing is that 5% of our mind is the conscious mind, right? And 95% of our mind is the subconscious mind. Well, that's the same numbers for energy. Like our brain has 5% of all of our energy and our body has the other 95%. So it makes a lot of sense that the body is your subconscious mind. But so if, you, if your brain isn't sending out the right signals consciously or subconsciously, then you're just going to revert back to whatever pattern was programmed into you. So it looks like there might be some kind of free like breaking through the bondage and some kind of mentality. This could be like a mentality issue. It looks like the power of a relationship is going to help balance this out. 
So this king of swords, whoever that is, they may have a great opportunity or they may get a great opportunity from someone else. This could be a degreed professional. It could be like a doctor, lawyer, representative type person. It doesn't have to be. But it might just be someone that normally relies on partnership for their business, for their work, maybe even for their identity. That could be where the blockage comes from. So if this is someone that normally you know, earns their living through the strengths of their partnerships. There could be a partnership that is forcing this person to come up against some subconscious, subconscious programming. And it like, there's like some discomfort here, <laughs> but there's a lot of lucrative, like lucrative energy with this ace of um, pentacles. So I don't know about these women, if they're all like, one woman or this is all three different women or even if it's like three different men three different people don't get hung up on gender with the tarot I'm, I'm describing these archetypes um but again the queen of wands is great that scarlet O'Hara, ready to just like move in on something ready to just take that leap of faith good confidence good you know good energy and then this queen of cups is really great she's really emotionally nurturing to herself and other people she's more far away very healing with her words and discussions and um, communications. It's this queen of swords, again, the more mental energy that's having some kind of difficulty with the, um, I don't know, with something. The five of pentacles. There's definitely some testing happening. It's like testing the mentality or testing the, I don't know if this is like testing confidence levels or testing, I don't know. I don't know what this is, but it's testing the mind. It's testing like the limits of it, the limits of, I don't know if it's like the limits of your imagination or if it's the limits of your, um, of your, I don't know, I guess you'll know. So if you're having any difficulty, but I'm still telling you that you're going to have like a partner or a partnership that's going to really help feel a lot. You're going to feel a lot better. And it's going to be, they're going to be a feminine dominant person. They don't have to be a woman. They're a feminine dominant person though. And they're strong. They're like a divine feminine. Like they're a strong feminine energy where they're, they're healthy. <laughs> like they're trustworthy. You know, they, they're, and they're looking like good leaders too. Hmm. Just, I feel like there's something else with this Queen of Swords. Then. Queen of Swords with the Five of Pentacles and the Knight of Cups. There might be something about worthiness. This, what's that? There could be something about maybe it's like a feminine dominant person or, um, you know, a woman maybe that is making. Some there, there's something going on with that. The feminine energy is looking really strong, except for that queen of swords. So that's what I'm going to say, you guys, is just really bring yourself back into balance. But you have to check. Don't be afraid to check. Don't be afraid to check your ego, your biases, your awareness, your state of consciousness. I regulate all day, every day, partly because it's my work. Um, but even when I'm not working, when I'm not on the clock, I'm still making sure that whenever I catch myself, even like a little toe step out of alignment, that I stop everything that I'm doing. Nothing in my life moves forward until I have regulated myself, until I have brought myself back into mental, spiritual, physical, what did I say emotional, emotional balance. Okay. Because it's not just truth, love, integrity out in the world when you're dealing with other people. It's also asking yourself, is this truthful and honest for me? Is this loving to me? Is this integrity, full of integrity, whole, full of wholesomeness or, or full of integrity for me? Is this good for me? You know, so it's like you, you do want to do that for all of this. And it's going to help it. But what's interesting is that your download had like all of the pieces and then waiting on that. So you're going to want to focus on bringing yourself back into 
confidence into, you know, you can call it brain heart coherence, you can call it in alignment, you can call whatever you want. Call whatever you want. Um, you'll know you've got it when you're at peace, when you're relaxed. Some of you, this really is like another partner though, or another person that it's just talking to them and getting in their energy and um, that sharing, that bond. Relationships should be a sanctuary, okay? A safe place for coverage, for safety, right? So it looks like someone's going to get that. And that'll probably be what provides a lot of relief. But I'm telling you that you don't have to wait for that to happen. You can generate that feeling of resolution, of confidence, safety, that it's all figured out. You can, you can generate that feeling right now. Ooh. Okay, bottom of the deck, the blackbird. The magical and unique qualities of your untapped potential are unfolding now. That sounds awesome. That really sounds amazing. You're untapped. We love that. We love tapping into untapped potential. So that could be any of the of the the king of swords or any of these three queens tapping the magical and unique qualities. This is something no one else on the planet has but you are unfolding. Very special. I also have a bunch of these cards. You have the canary. Step forward now and sing your song. There is power in finding your voice, especially if it's a very unique voice. There's power in it, so use it. You have the rave and the universe is calling you to notice important synchronicities. That's when they start. Test it. When you're nice and, okay, the synchronicities, the confirmations, the opportunities, all of that is confirmation in itself that you're doing something right. And the woodpecker, use your discernment and fortitude to achieve your goals and find a new rhythm. I love that they put discernment and fortitude. Very, very important. Remember, you have to do all of the immaterial stuff first. Balancing your discernment, your consideration, your meditation, and then you can take your action. Discernment and fortitude to achieve your goals and find a new rhythm. So there is going to be a little bit of discomfort getting out of the old rhythm because that's familiar. But you're really going to like the new one a lot better. Love you guys. Take very good care. I will check in on your energies next time, my loves. Until then, many, many beautiful blessings upon all of your beautiful headstockings. Ah.